So we're going to start off with a uh, simple box in two-point perspective. Um, we're going to use our shortcut from last time, which is splitting apart our horizon line um, and putting vanishing points on the splits. Um, we're going to drop a vertical This time I'm using pencil because it's easier to do uh, value with. Should still be able to see it. All right. Just repeating what we did in previous lessons. So if you're confused at this point, go back and check those out. Close off this box. Drop a couple more verticals. Okay, so we have what viewed two dimensionally is two triangles right next to each other, um, marked off into uh, a couple of other polygons. So, what makes anything three dimensional is uh, picking three values. We already have one value on the paper, and that is uh, white. Um, so we can go, uh, you know, we're just gonna use three, we're gonna use our white of the paper, a middle, and a dark. So we're gonna start filling in some value very loosely on one side of the plane, or one side of this box that we've drawn. Doesn't matter if you go out of the edges at all, or how tight you are with this. The point is just to stay loose when you're drawing in perspective, because perspective drawings, especially with rulers, can lose a lot of life. Um, and you can bring that back, bring back the uh, life of your drawing through some uh, active mark making. Okay. So immediately you can see that uh, this has developed a little bit of dimensionality, okay? So we're gonna make this the dark side and we're gonna push the value down just a little bit more. And I'm using a cheapy pencil, probably from Walmart or something like that. I don't know, these things drift into my collection. All right, we're gonna make this side a little bit lighter. How you make your marks is up to you, um, and your mark making style is something that you'll want to develop uh, over time, because that's something sort. It's sort of like a signature, the way you make marks. If you blend out all your marks, you have no signature, and it's not that interesting. Okay, so since this isn't really all that well defined, um, you can see the edges are a little messy. One thing we can do is uh, add some line weight, and what I like to do for line weight is um, uh, whatever's closer, um, I like to have a real big, heavy line. And right now we're getting into something interesting, which is mixing line and value. So you can see with a heavy line, that line really pulls forward. Um, what we're gonna we're gonna do for these is we're gonna make them heavy, but much less heavy. Okay. This one's already in a good range, so I'm just gonna leave it like it is. And then for receding lines, we're going to uh, make them progressively less heavy. So it's gonna start heavy and get lighter as it goes back. kind of digging in. And one thing that's nice um, is uh, for these lines on the ground, we're gonna make them heavier than the lines on the top. So we're gonna just go over those several times. And that'll give, uh, give our solid a sense of being literally grounded, like it's actually touching the ground.
already you can kind of sense that this could be a shadow. So we're going to come up to the top and do the same thing, just a little lighter. All right, and now we've developed a, uh, a quick value study of a, uh, of a solid in two-point perspective. Um, if we want to clean this up, we could uh, grab an eraser, which I'll do real quick. And uh, kind of clean up some of our, clean up some of our construction lines. All right. So now we have a fairly clean, uh, clean box. <sighs> there it is. And that's it for now on line weight and value. We'll get to some, uh, some more advanced concepts as we start uh, doing some on-location drawings and uh, and drawing actual objects instead of idealized geometrical figures. All right, let's move on to something else.